Hello, welcome back to the sixth episode of this Japanese rule lecture. Today we will talk about this bend for at the corner. We know that in most of the cases, this would be a deck group in both Chinese rule or the Japanese rule. Let's see why this is a deck group. For white, there is no measure for white to leave. White cannot leave because black could capture it. Even though black do not capture it, after white capture this, this will become a strict free, then black could fill in, this group will dead. So white could not leave. But we know that white could not leave is not a reason to explain this group is dead. For example, the Saki, one side could not have two eyes, but the opponents could not capture it. Could black capture the white? This would become a problem. Black could play inside here. Then after white capture this, black throw in. White could play this move. This become a core. So actually this is not a dead shape we commonly know. But why we always said the band for at the corner is a dead shape. There is two reasons. The first reason is because in the Chinese rule case. In the Chinese rule case Remember that we could fill in our territories after we finish the all the damage. Then as we could fill in all the territories, we could protect all our core threat. So Black could start this call anytime. And when Black try to kill it, it is always Black's right to capture this first. So if black could protect all of the core threat, then black could capture this group of stones. This is the case in the Chinese rule. But we know that there will be some exceptional cases. For example, if there is some Saki shape. In this example, there is a 10,000 year core or a Saki on the top right hand side. Then there will be core threat for white. For example, if black try to kill it, this time white have core threat. This become a complicated case. So, in, so in the Chinese rule, although in most of the cases a band for at the corner is considered dead, as we could protect all our core threat, it is not always dead in the Chinese rule. But in the Japanese rule, it is considered as a dead group, no matter there is core threat or not. Because do you, if you remember the content of the last episode, I have explained it, the core rule in the life and death analysis after the game has finished. We don't use core threat. We need to pass a move in order to recapture a core. This is how the Japanese rule work when we analyze a group is life or death. So in the Japanese rule, it said that after black trying to kill this group, white could not find any core threat. No matter even there is any core threat, white could not find any core threat. White could only pass a move and black could capture all of it. This is always used as an example of explaining why the Chinese rule is making more sense than the Japanese rule. This will become another topic and you may express your view about which rule would be a better rule. In my opinion, the Go rule could be even more and more natural in the sense that we don't need to definite any things and the Go rule could be even simpler than the Chinese rule. But in practice, there will still be many disputes. And I would say that in the modern Chinese rule or Japanese rule, in 99.999% of cases, there won't be any dispute. So although this band for at the corner is considered a bit unnatural for Chinese player, as for Chinese rule, there may be a chance for whites to win the call and leave the group. But in the Japanese rule, it just considered it as a deck group. So that's all for this episode and 
Thank you for watching. Please like the video if you like the content.